What's up, sweaties? It's Josh Nip. I'm at Comic Bug here in Culver City, standing here with director Tim Miller, also a giant comic book sweaty. What's up, Tim? Nice to be here. I went up to Marvel and DC, and I tried to get a job. Could not get a job. I got this small little movie called Deadpool. Have you heard about it? Yeah, this is some fucked up shit. Hey, man, I'm, I'm so happy that we're here at your store. You come and shop here all the time, right? Yes, this is my comic book store. Every fan has their store. This one is mine. All right, Tim, let's go check out some comics. All right, let's, let's do it. it. Yeah. What got you into doing animation? You run Blur Studios. How did that all start? I was an illustrator, right? I loved to draw, and then I loved to tell stories. And then after college, I went up to Marvel and DC and New York, and I tried to get a job. Just emptying the trash cans, could not get a job <laughs> at all. And then I got a job at Sony Imageworks, and that was like at the dawn of the computer age. It used to be big, expensive computers to do computer graphics back yeah. in the day. In the, in the art community, it was like there was an elite group that worked on these $100,000 computers, and I'm like, fuck it. I can do more shit on my $4,000 computer at home. So we quit and borrowed $20,000 from my wife's grandfather. Uh, we started Blur. And so it was three people, and we've just sort of grown since then, and then we kind of fell into this video game market. Some say that the cutscenes from the Old Republic are some of the best cutscenes ever made. They created the game, and Lucas created the world. We were just borrowing things for a while, but it was great to be included. I think one of the best cutscenes I've ever seen that you actually did was the Justice League cutscene. What was that game called? DC Universe Online. DC Universe Online, never played that, but I watched it on YouTube like 2,500 times because it was so amazing. It was literally the Justice League movie that me and a bunch of other nerds always wanted to see. Jeff Johns had written the backstory and it sort of you know outlined what the story of the game was, and there was one little sentence in there that said, and Lex Luthor defeated all the superheroes which made Earth vulnerable when Brainiac comes back. And, and I'm like, oh fuck, I wanna see that moment, I wanna see. And the, and the client, the, their thing was, you gotta make something that we remember. And I said, well, how do you make memorable shit? Well, we gotta fucking kill people. That's what we gotta do. So I'm gonna kill everybody. Are you cool with that? And they're like, sure. Let's talk about the goon. Now okay. you and Eric yes. Powell, check out all these flavory comics right here. We have Look. them presented. Yeah, it's the Goon. goon. Um, if you don't know who the Goon is, the Goon is a badass, kind of like almost like a bouncer in Chinatown in the past who fights zombies. How would you describe your collaboration with Eric to make the Goon? Eric is amazing. We've known him for a long time now. Um, I have known Mike Richardson at Dark Horse for a long time, and I tried to get the comic, so they said yes, and then and then we developed it. And Eric wrote the script fucking great, which I think, you know, normally in these things in Hollywood, like the creators are, are often pushed right. aside. We didn't want to do that. We brought, you know, Eric right in. Um, and Eric wrote the script and it's great. It's just a hard one because it's not Disney. It's not G-rated. Right. So it took a while. And then we pitched it and we got a lot of no's. And then we did a Kickstarter uh, and we raised a lot of money to do it. We've done an animatic for the storyboard animatic for the whole movie. Um, and we used it to pitch it, and we're going to have an announcement soon. I can't make it quite hey man, yet, I, but it I, will happen. We have never given up. Look, I pitched in on the on that Kickstarter. I got a kick-ass. How much money did you give it? 150 bucks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we got Paul Giamatti as Frankie and Clancy Brown as the goon. I mean, that's a fantastic team up right there. It was amazing. I pitch it as Army of Darkness meets Goodfellas, um, but it's just Army of Darkness meets Goodfellas. Why is this not happening? I know. If you want to check out the goon by Chinatown, it's like a graphic novel that he did. Yeah, goes into it's a like, great one. Goes a little back into the history of the goon character. So I think it's fantastic. What would you recommend for the goon? Like an intro. I think you should start at the beginning. Rough stuff. It's the collected trade. It's the first issues. I think it's a great introduction to this crazy fucking world. Look, he's being eaten by rats. It's amazing. <laughs> it's got a sense of humor. It's yeah. got horror. It's got action. It's got. Everything. It's yeah. ultra violent. It's so much flavor. Hey, let's check out some of the rest of the okay, story. Okay, let's go. So you did Deadpool. How did that all get started? How did Blur make that little trailer that launched the movie? The DC Universe thing you talked about. Uh, this guy, Drew Crivello, who's an exec at Fox, was working on the X-Men movies, and he saw that trailer, tracked me down, and said, hey, I think 
maybe you shouldn't be some other director's bitch. Maybe you should be directing your own thing and you haven't directed anything, but I got this small little movie called Deadpool. Have you heard about it? Uh, and I said, in fact, I have. In fact, I've read all the comics and read the script too because the script had leaked online. So then we, we developed it, we did the little test and then it just didn't happen. And in Hollywood, like stuff gets to a point, like you get a budget, you get a movie star, you get everything. And then the studio says yes or no. And then if they say no, everybody walks away quickly. Um, and that's kind of what happened. Um, and, the, and the leak, which happened at Comic-Con, um, I, I literally got home from Comic-Con, put my bags down if from getting off the train, 22 consecutive Comic-Cons, this will be my 23rd. Uh, and I, my phone starts blowing up with like, dude, your shit's online, oh my fucking God. And I was horrified. I mean, I felt sick to my stomach because I thought Fox would kill me. Wow. Yeah. And they didn't, they greenlit your movie. I know. That's go, amazing. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, go figure. You made Deadpool. Yeah. That movie went out of everybody's projections, except yeah. for mine, because I had predicted it was going to make over $100 million. That's you right. Did. I was right, son. You did. You did. Um, and you did. I'm, gl I'm glad I was right, because it was such an incredible film. Your sensibilities with Ryan Reynolds and everybody on the team made a fantastic movie. Thank you. What is next for you? I mean, Deadpool 2, I know you're not working on that. Any words about Deadpool 2 and anything you want to say about that? Uh, you know, I was going to do it for a while, and then I wasn't. Uh, I was sad about that, but I wish them the best of luck. I'm sure it's going to be great, because the character's great. And Ryan was born to play that guy. And uh, I'm working on a, a big anthology animation thing that I can't quite announce yet, uh, and another big movie that will happen, hopefully start shooting next year. So Tim, why don't you recommend a couple Deadpool comics to the viewers? We got a good batch right here. Oh man, I'd say anything. Deadpool is great. Um, I particularly like Daniel Way's run because he's a fucking nut. He came up to the set one day and visited. We got Rob's new cover. I got I got an original signed one nice. of this cover from Rob. Definitely, I'd recommend Jerry Duggan and Brian Pesane's Deadpool, which is like, I mean, come on, you, like just like look at the cover right there. I mean. Madness. So let's get into some other comic books. I want to okay. like pick out some comics that you want to get. Let's get okay. into it. Oh, I heard this comic was total shit. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty garbage, it's man. Yeah. I, would, I would never recommend it to you. I would not buy this no. comic. This is his comic, ladies and gentlemen. And it's great. I haven't read it, but I will now. Shaolin Cowboy Band. I got all these. Oh, you already got them? Well, I don't have this no, one. No, this is brand new. This run. is brand new? Brand new. Oh, well, I don't have this one. Yeah, this is some fucked up shit. This is one I just picked up, and I read you that really issue. Like, you yeah. really like the horror stuff, don't Yes. You? Anything Mike Allred is on, I highly suggest. Just check <laughs> it out. It's like <laughs> 60s flavor. OK. You got The Dark Knight Returns. It's Frank Miller. You got Azarello and John Romero Jr. with The Joker. It sort of like get, fills in the blanks of what happened to Robin from Frank Miller's Dark Universe. I have not read this. I will. Oh, here's another one right here. This came out last week. Batman by Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso. This is fantastic. I, I get, I'm going to buy one myself, but I got to recommend it. I'll get it for sure. So you want to grab Tokyo? I'll have that, please. Okay, Tokyo Ghost. Yeah. It's fantastic. Bam. Yeah, give me that. This is a little, gets a little, a little weird, a little artsy, but um, it's Asterios Polyp by David Mazzucchelli. I got this many years ago when it first came out. I'd highly suggest reading it because really? it's a lot of fun. Here's the best thing about it, your local comic book store. If I saw this online, I probably would never buy it. But I come here, they recommend it, you recommend it. I get a chance to look at the shelves and go, holy fuck, I didn't know that that was there. Or, oh my God, I love this artwork. This is amazing. That's why you come to a comic book store. My back is breaking. Right. My Yo. back is breaking here, let's, so we we should. Uh, let's get over to your pull okay, list. Okay, let's go. Let's go. So Tim, explain to us what a pull list is. Okay, so this is one of the best reasons you come to the comic book store is you can tell them this is the list of comics that I like every week, and they when they when the new ones come in, they'll pull them for you. I happened to be here like two weeks ago, so my my pull is kind of small but they give you a stack of stuff. If I, like when I was in Vancouver shooting Deadpool, these guys 
did my pull list for me and sent me a box every month of my comics up in, up in Vancouver, so it was great. Is that it for today? That's it for, huh, is that not enough for you? I'm king of the nerds, yes. Ready for the damage? Check it out. 350, 32. 350? I gotta spend some more money. Yeah. What a bargain! Yep, thank you. Thank you. The pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Hey, so you've been watching comic book shopping at the Comic Bug in Culver City. Thank you so much, Tim Miller, for buying this incredible stack of amazing material. It is my pleasure. You don't have to thank me for something I do on a regular basis. Well, hey, man, let's let's read it, man. All right, let's, let's get go. out of here. Are you gonna help me? I'm gonna totally. You gonna help, help me slip my bag? You look like a sturdy lad. 